Dave, thanks very much for joining us on CNBC TV 18. It's always good to have you on the program. Uh, before I talk to you about technology and disruptions, let me ask you about the big tax cut announced by President Trump in America and what the impact is likely to be on corporate America and also U.S. companies operating in emerging markets like India. Do you foresee significant restructuring of operations? Uh, what is the impact of the tax cuts on business? Oh, I think the uh, tax cut overall is going to be beneficial uh, not just for business, but for all the people that are employed by uh, businesses. Uh, so I think it's actually going to be a good phenomenon. I don't think it really has an impact on international trade in any way or uh, movement of factories one way or the other. This is uh, just a case of putting more money in the pockets of companies for them to be able to invest. And if they invest more, then employees will do uh, better. And I would say it's pretty much as straightforward as that. Uh, I do worry about the long-term effect of it in terms of the impact it has on our overall debt. Our annual deficits are going to increase. Our debt, which is already high, is going to get higher. Uh, it could accelerate a potential debt crisis. But at least in the short term, it should be a boost. It should be a boost to the U.S. economy, which should be helpful to the world. Uh, in the short term, you expect the U.S. economy to benefit from the tax cuts, Dave. How confident do you feel of the growth momentum that we're currently seeing in the U.S. being able to sustain itself? Oh, I think uh, economic growth in the U.S. should be in that, my guess, 2.5% range. For uh, could go on for another four or five years. Uh, this year might be a little higher because of the tax cut impact, but over time, it's tough to see right now, other than some big geopolitical event, what could possibly bring it down. Because consumer balance sheets are in mm. good shape, uh, bank balance sheets are in good shape, corporate balance sheets are in good shape, uh, capacity utilization across the U.S. is still low. There's still plenty of room for it to, to grow. So it's tough to point to what the potential problem is. So I would say it could go on like this for another, I don't know, three to five years. Uh, we'll see, though. The world has an interesting way of evolving very differently than we all forecast. Mm -hmm. But right now, I'd say things could look pretty good for a while. Right. Uh, as you pointed out, Dave, we do live in dynamic times. You know, the last uh, time you and I chatted, the threat of protectionism of countries like the U.S. looking more inwards uh, was a real threat. Do you believe that that has diminished uh, from the last time we spoke? Well, I would say the uh, amount of globalization hasn't really changed, but the attitude towards globalization has been changing a lot. And as you know, protectionism exists in every country, and it's particularly robust in India, as you uh, very well know. So I'm hopeful that over time, tempers will cool a little bit, it seems like every country seems to feel like they are a victim of globalization because they can see the downsides that have occurred, but they don't see the upsides that have also occurred for them. And this is one where we need to, as countries, all of us, start pointing out to the benefits of trade in addition to the things where it does hurt. The problem that you run into with uh, any country is it's easy to see the hurt generally. It's more specific, a plant is closed. It's difficult to see the benefit that accrues to everybody else because it's a small piece that in the U.S. goes to 300 million people. Collectively, it adds up to a lot more than what that single point was. But the hurt is very specific, very visible. The benefit is very diffused and invisible, but it is real and it is there. The same is true in India, and India has historically a problem with protectionism, and you can see it in retail, you can see it in agriculture. If you want, really want a country to progress, those things need to start to open. So I'm hopeful that across the world, people start looking at how do we make sure that trade benefits everybody. And uh, when I say that, I don't mean to get hung up on it's got to benefit us to the exclusion of the other guys recognize there's a give and take and on balance everybody comes up and that i'm hoping that we return to that kind of dynamic uh, as a world not just in the u.s not just in india but everywhere
You know, Dave, uh, in our last interview, you said, uh, uh, and something that I, I always remember, that capital is a coward uh, and it goes where it feels safe. Uh, as you look at the world today, in terms of Honeywell or other U.S. companies making investments into emerging markets like India, India is a country that you know very well. Uh, do you believe that given what is happening in the U.S., A, the strength and the recovery of the economy plus the tax cuts, we are going to see, uh, you know, the flow of dollars into emerging markets, perhaps ebb? Uh, I would think not. Uh, what we refer to as high growth regions, of which uh, uh, China and India are a part, are becoming a more and more important part of the world. And if you want some statistics, uh, 1990 high growth regions represented about 24% of global GDP. In 2010, they represented about 34% of global GDP. In 20 years, high growth regions will be a little more than 50% of global GDP. Not global GDP growth, actual global GDP. And when you're faced with that kind of dynamic, you have to invest. Now, each country will be different. So in some cases, you may say, I'm just going to invest in salespeople. Others, you might say, salespeople in a warehouse. If you start to feel safe about the country, you'll say salespeople, warehouse, and a factory. And it's going to differ by country, but the safer each country is, the more they make capital feel safe, the greater the chance that you're going to see investment in factories and long-term jobs. Because if you're someone like me, and you have to decide where to put a factory, and it has to last for 20 or 30 years, you want to make sure there's going to be continuity to good government and to safety of that capital. Let me end then by asking you, Dave, uh, you know, you've always been bullish on India and the India story. As you look at uh, where things are today in India, uh, you know, what's, what's your own sense of uh, the strength of the growth momentum uh, and your own, uh, Honeywell's own sort of uh, uh, story here in India? Well, our Honeywell story, as you know, is quite good. We've gone from about 500 people uh, 15 years ago to over 13,000 today. And uh, the economy is finally starting to really move again. And we're going to be able to benefit from that also. My big hope for the country is uh, if you go back to the 1990s when Manmohan Singh was uh, finance minister, he was able to get through a number of changes that allowed the country to grow faster for a good period of time. And the country benefited. But the country led up, government led up, and nobody really pushed more change. It was like that was enough. So then we ended up in this kind of stultifying period where nothing was really happening, the bureaucracy was taking over, and the economy wasn't growing. Well, PM Modi, who I hope you appreciate that I'm channeling with my beard, I'm a big fan of uh, PM Modi, uh, he instituted a number of changes again, which are again causing the economy to grow. But if people and the government start to feel like they're done, they've done enough because the economy is growing, well, the same darn thing is going to happen again. It will just level off. The change has to, st has to still keep coming. And there's a significant amount of change that still needs to occur in the country. The bureaucracy is just stifling, absolutely stifling. Uh, retail needs to be expanded and made more competitive. Uh, protectionism needs to uh, disappear. Uh, education and broadband, like we just talked about, all these things still need to happen. And I'm hopeful that uh, people will support uh, PM Modi's government and make these changes continue to happen over the next 10, 15, 20 years so that economic progress continues. So I'm a big fan in the possibility of what can happen in India, but those government changes need to keep happening. Dave Cody, it's always a pleasure to speak with you. Thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18, and we appreciate your time.